So Tesla has come out with a new idea, a way to give owners some flexibility. If your battery pack is replaced in your Model 3, it appears you may have the option to get an LFP pack instead of the NMC pack that you had before. This is potentially a good thing. We'll discuss it. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. So I did want to say a quick thanks to uh, John for using the uh, old referral link. Congratulations on your new Model Y. Uh, John, I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoy mine. And these referral credits are how I'm able to be here in a different place because tomorrow I'm going to the uh, Tesla Fremont factory to get a tour, which I purchased with referral credits. And I'm able to do that uh, because I can drive here without paying for my miles because I get supercharger miles for free as well. Thank you so much. Other ways to subscribe are on the screen now to help out, to support. I appreciate it. So, Randy, uh, you've got a Model 3. No, Model Y. you got a Model Y? Your wife has a Model 3. <laughs> no, we only have a Model Y. I did have a Volvo, but I did sell my Volvo, and now we're a one-car family. Yeah. Okay. So, let's say you had a Model 3. Let's say, just for fun. <laughs> for fun. If your pack needed to be replaced under warranty, out of warranty, and they said, uh, hey, do you want the LFP pack? The first question is, would you appreciate having that option? Sure. Always oh, optionality is almost always good every place but Costco. <laughs> uh, mm, that's a good point. <laughs> yes. Sometimes we have two choices. Sometimes it's just the one choice. But, you know, uh, that's great. Who wouldn't want the choice? Sure. Some people say, I definitely want the one or I definitely want the other. So in terms of that LFP pack, why would someone want to do that instead? So I am not uh, a scientist. I have another show that I do with Brian Wong because you're Brian White and he's Wong. Mm -hmm. So his show that we do is another, it's another future show, but it's called uh, next big future. Mm -hmm. and, uh, on that show, we talk about science because he's the scientist and I'm not. So, but I did have a chemistry set when I was a kid. That's great. And so th now I know all about LFP and, uh, and, you know, anyway, I think, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all that to say, I think that the main reason that I would want it is because it's going to last forever and I can fully charge it and fully discharge it. Those are the two. Those are the two. So for me, most of the time I'm charging to 80. I talked with a gentleman yesterday who does most of his driving in town in Redding, California. He only charges to 70. Jordan Giesecke, because he is the battery guru, I said, I asked him, what do you charge to? And he said, well, I, I really only drive in town. I charge to 50. Wow. So, wow. That's, but he knows what he does and all that with an LFP pack. They don't mind being charged to a hundred. They're happy with it. They're not super happy under 10, but you can charge to a hundred. So you've got an extra 20% usable capacity. Right. So even though you're going to get a little bit less total kilowatt hours, mm -hmm. it's only going to really matter on road trips. And most people do very few road trips, certainly a lot fewer than they expect. Now you mentioned longevity, and that is a trademark of LFP. What, uh, what kind of longevity uh, have we been seeing from the numbers? So I was uh, under the, I, I, I think this has been lost because I think the numbers didn't matter. If your car is gonna last, if your battery is gonna last 300,000 miles, it may outlast you. It'll certainly outlast me. <laughs> so I think when it started talking about million mile batteries and stuff, that might have mattered to uh, Uber drivers and and people that that drive professionally. But for the for most of us, we've never ever owned a car that went over two hundred thousand miles, much less three hundred thousand miles. And so the, the the numbers were kind of silly. So the lithium ion batteries are probably 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 going to be just fine for 300,000 miles, but the, uh, these, uh, LFPs, they might go a million. And that's the thing. We know the million mile battery is already out and, uh, the ones they're look, tinkering with now, the newer configurations and setups could already be 4 million mile batteries. And like you just said, 
what's the difference between a million and four million if the if no car is going to go that far? No car is going to go one, let alone four. The advantage becomes in stationary applications where you will be power cycling more aggressively, more frequently. Uh, you can you could actually in a commercial application get through that many cycles, but what it really means is you no longer have to think about it. Now yeah. you you can recall in the early days of the SNX when unlimited uh, fast charging was included in the price, there were a lot of people who would buy those to use them on Uber and Lyft and abuse the heck out of all charge them all the way up, discharge them all the way down three times a day. And uh, maybe, okay, twice, uh, constantly, regularly. Yeah. Yeah. And we heard about a lot of pack replacements because right. this was still a new thing. This wasn't what those 18650 cells were designed for. They were designed for lower drain applications like laptops. But with the 2170s, we don't see a lot of pack replacements right. on models three and Y. Right. It just isn't common. So now the question is, why would Tesla even give you a choice? Why, why is it better for them if you say, you know what? No, I'm going to, I want the LFP. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I, I, would, I would suppose that the LFP is going to be eventually much more widely available. It's going to be, a, it's probably going to be the primary chemistry for batteries in general. And the lithium nickel kind of combination is going to become the specialized one. And so getting people used to the idea of less impressive battery, if you will, uh, might be part of the strategy. Uh, maybe it's also, uh, let's face it, probably 80% of the population could care less. Mm -hmm. Sure. So one advantage I've seen is this is probably a cheaper pack for Tesla to acquire. But the hidden one, the hidden one that I haven't seen people talking about is every NMC pack that they put in a replacement is one that they can't sell new to get the federal incentive. Right. Because the LFP packs do not qualify for the federal incentive because they're not made in North America. They're made in China and the Chinese batteries, cars with Chinese batteries do not qualify unless you're leasing instead of purchasing. So if that pack has to go to an existing customer, it doesn't matter where that pack came from. It sells the same. It buys the same. But in a new car, we really need it to be a Nevada built battery pack. So because, you know, we we want to come up with as many possible ideas as possible, um, I, I'm going to guess that the LFP, the, okay, who's going to need a battery replacement? We already said hardly anybody, but the person who's going to need a battery replacement is probably somebody who has gone 240,000, 340,000 miles. So what would they probably prefer? They would probably prefer an LFP so they could get the longevity so they could charge it all the way up and all the way down. Somebody like an Uber or a Lyft or somebody that's driving it professionally uh, and puts a lot of miles on it every single day. And that's very possible. Really, both packs have gotten reliable to the point where the only times you're going to see a replacement is probably not from abuse. We've seen studies where they look at... Uh, percentage of people who slow charge at home versus fast charge at public chargers and found very little difference in degradation over time because the, the chemistry has gotten better. The manufacturing's gotten better. It is my belief that if I'm at 70,000 miles and I need a pack replacement, it doesn't matter which one I get. It will last me beyond the life of the car. But there are those people, like you said, who either want to charge to a hundred or want to, um, or, or, or know that they're going to drive another 400,000 miles for them. It makes sense. But again, choice, choice, Randy. Yeah. I, I prefer choice. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know I'd what? like you to replace my sandwich, but uh, I might take a burger instead. But you'll have to keep shopping at Ralph's then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's covering all the important points. By the time this comes out, I probably... Uh, will have done the tour or am about to do the tour. So I'm very excited to see the inside of Tesla Fremont. I could have gotten a ticket to Texas, but you don't get to schedule. And when there's a flight involved, it's a little more complicated and I didn't know how much time I'd have. So I thought, you know what, I'll do Fremont. And I uh, opened it up to my supporters to say, I've got three tickets, who wants to go? And uh, 
three of my uh, longest supporters um, who've been very instrumental in getting me out there to events. Uh, so Kelly from the Michigan club is coming. Uh, Bert, who is my Ford engineer friend who talked with us about the Mach-E program from an inside perspective and uh, Jeff Songster channel producer who uh, got me, who flew me to England to present at fully charged. Those are the people who I chose to take with me. They were also the first to respond, which made it even easier. Um, but whether you're a supporter or just a fan, you know, I, I get out a lot. Come say hello. I've had people, Jim, the Iowa Tesla guy said, I saw you at the Giga Texas uh, Cybertruck after party and I didn't want to bug you. And I said, what do you think I'm doing there? My friend, come say hello. He said, yeah, but, bugged. Well, and he said, yeah, but I didn't think you knew who I was. I I watch and comment on a lot of very small channels because you never know who's got the new great wisdom. Yeah. So I try to be supportive of everybody. That's and for right. those of you, you can pretend. Yeah. I mean, I even slum it with Randy Kirk. <laughs> yeah. And I love your channel. You know that, but I love your channel too. Well, and the thing is we don't agree on everything. We don't always see eye to eye and that's where value is. If we just agreed on everything all the time, it wouldn't make sense. But especially when we're talking about things like the looming recession, the uh, looming you, recession. You and I can disagree. But the folks, uh, but the folks in the looming business, what will they do? Uh, switch to, uh, I assume, you know, cotton poly synthetics. I don't know, okay. but yeah, the machines can do it better. Okay. Looming, Randy. Oh, where do you go? So, uh, in the comments, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Which battery pack would you want as your replacement if you needed to get a replacement? Uh, everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual thing. Smack the thummy thing in either direction. It's decorative. It's a, a, a thumbs down counts the same as a thumbs up. So, if you really hate me, go through all my videos and give them the thumbs down. No one will know. Except Brian, you, you, you left you left off the obvious opportunity that you had there about oh. batteries. And replacing, you know, a battery in my, in my pacemaker. Oh, I don't yeah. have a pacemaker, but it, it would have been an old man joke that you could have used, you know. But you know what? If you got a million mile battery, that would, you would never, that would definitely be a lifetime battery with an LFP. Yeah. So uh, guys, let's uh, save up for Randy's pacemaker. Uh, and uh, everybody else, you know, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the next one.